we'll come back to the equine anatomy course. Um, we're continuing uh, talking about the anatomy of the equine abdomen after we talked about the head and the neck and uh, the um, uh, thorax. Um, we started on the equine abdomen in the past couple lectures and we've talked about uh, the muscles of the abdominal wall and the uh, deep fascia, the abdominal tunic, and the different surgical uh, yeah, approaches that we can do there, paralumbar fossa or the flank incisions, and then we moved and talked about uh, the different organs in the abdominal cavity, and we said that the majority of these uh, organs uh, consist of the gastrointestinal tract. We know what's on the left and what's on the right hand side of the abdominal cavity. And um, we reached uh, last time a point where we need to talk about one of the very um, common or frequently uh, seen diseases in, in the equine abdomen, and that is uh, colic. So this lecture, I'll, I'll be talking about uh, colic from an anatomical standpoint. I will not be talking uh, maybe in, in too much details about the clinical uh, aspects of it. Um, the reason is because you will um, see those uh, aspects in um, in medicine and surgery uh, later on, but 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 the, but but you will see a lot of clinics here because that's how I'm going to explain the anatomical structures is based on their uh, clinical relevance. So so that's where the clinics come and and, and to play an, an important role in this in this lecture, if you will. So let's start. Uh, uh, talking about colic, and first I would like to uh, 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 remind you uh, of the factors that affect the the um, equine abdominal cavity causing colic. So, what causes colic? I divided the um, factors that cause uh, colic into uh, two groups. One is anatomical factors and the other is non-anatomical factors and anatomical factors would include free moving intestine acute reductions in diameter wide mesentery and natural openings and i will be talking about each of these points in details um, in a second Freely moving intestine. Freely moving intestine, we have two parts of the gastrointestinal tract that are freely moving. Number one is the jejunum, because they're too long, and the shape of the abdominal cavity in horses is cylindrical compared to cows which is basically a barrel shape so ha they, they have or the abdominal viscera have more chance in moving freely in the equine abdomen compared to the barrel shape uh, abdominal cavity in cows. Another part of the gastrointestinal tract that is freely moving is the left ventral and left dorsal colons left ventral and left dorsal colon this is the pelvic flexure this is the left ventral colon and this is the left dorsal colon you can see it's not saculated, it's smooth, and it only has one band. Right? Staculation has multiple bands. So this is one of the reasons for colic to take place. This part is freely moving and therefore it twists. It twists. And when this part twists, basically it closes the blood vessels and closes the movement of, of ingesta uh, to, the, to the next part of the intestine, making the horse colicky. So this is the first factor, which is freely 
moving intestines. And, and again, we have also the jejunum as another part which is freely moving. In the gastrointestinal tract of the horse, especially in the large intestine, there are three areas that has acute reduction in diameter, meaning that the intestinal lumen becomes very small all of a sudden. The intestinal lumen becomes very narrow all of a sudden. Not gradual, but all of a sudden. And these three areas, for example, here, you have the area between the right dorsal colon. Look how, how big the diameter of this part of the colon is. To the transverse colon. So, right dorsal colon to the transverse colon, there is an acute reduction in diameter that causes impaction colic. The injecta does not move easily from the right dorsal colon to the transverse colon. So this is one area. The second area that predisposes the horse to impaction colic is the area between the cecum and the right ventral colon. This area is called ear. This area is called the cecocolic junction. Cecocolic junction. Again, the ingesta does not move freely from the cecum to the right ventral colon. The third area that predisposes the horse to impaction colic is the pelvic flexure. The pelvic flexure, which is the area connecting the left ventral colon with the left dorsal colon. You can see this acute reduction right here at the pelvic flexure. So there are three areas that predisposes, predispose the, the horse to impaction colic. The area between the right dorsal colon and the transverse colon, number one. Number two, the cecocolic junction, the area between the cecum and the right ventral colon. And then the third area is the pelvic flexure, which is a connection between the left ventral colon and the left dorsal colon. These are the three areas that uh, yeah, uh, uh, predispose the horse to uh, impaction colic because they, the, 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 the diameter decreases all of a sudden. There's not a gradual decrease in the diameter. There's a sudden decrease in the, uh, the uh, diameter. And that's what causes impaction column. Now, I, we, we, the third point that we're going to talk about is wide mesentery. And wide mesentery, wide mesentery occurs basically in the small intestine, mainly the jejunum, because it has a wide mesentery, as I mentioned. Earlier, which predisposes the the um, the intestine, the jejunum in this in this case, to two cases. Uh, sometimes they twist and they block the blood vessel uh, or the the blood circulation from that the piece of intestine, which basically after a while uh, this piece uh, of intestine uh, becomes a dead piece. Very important, and sometimes. Uh, th there is a, a rent or a, a tear in the in the uh, mesentery, which allows the intestine to dive through that rent and get twisted again. This is called a um, uh, intestinal uh, valvulus uh, and also uh, herniation, of course. This is intestinal herniation, where you have where you have a, a tear or a rent in the in the in the. Uh, mesentery where it allows the, the part of the jejunum to dive in through that tear and get twisted and things like that. Sometimes we have um, a case that's called intersusception. Intersusception or telescoping where basically part of the part of the intestine dives into the into the the, the um, uh, rent or the tear that the uh, uh, mesentery caused 
and uh, uh, once once that piece dives into that part, uh, basically it, it blocks the blood circulation as well as the uh, the moving of the ingesta. Uh, you, these these intestinal herniation and volvulus and and um, uh, intersusception, you will see you will see something like like this in surgery. This is this is the picture that you will see in in, in during surgery. Uh, this is incarceration, meaning that part of the part of the intestine is normal, as we can see here, pink and, and nice and uh, in, in color and moist and everything. And then the other abnormal part, which is which is basically dead tissue. Why dead tissue? Dead tissue because uh, there was blockage of the blood supply to that to that uh, part of the intestine. So so these are these are the three points that that we uh, talked about the free moving intestines and the acute reduction in diameter and the white mesentery. The fourth point is the natural openings, and I'll explain that. So we have three natural openings in the in the abdominal cavity. We have the inguinal canal, and I I explained that inguinal canal earlier earlier, and I will talk about it even even a little uh, more here. We have the nif nephrosplenic ligament area, and we have the epiploic foramen area. The inguinal canal. Usually the jejunum gets entrapped there. See, these are anatomical reasons for for colic. That's why I have them as natural openings. The nephrosplenic ligament, which is the ligament between the left kidney and the spleen. There is an area, and I'll show it to you now, that makes it available for the left dorsal colon and the pelvic plexer to get entrapped there. The third area is the epiploic foramen, and again, the jejunum have a tendency to, to, to get entrapped there. That's, uh, the, the reason, again, is because the, the jejunum is very long, tens of meters, and also, and also it has wide mesentery, so it's always moving. It's always moving. So, uh, because of the peristaltic movement, of course, and that's why it, it gets to the uh, to the uh, to, to these natural openings. So, the inguinal canal, the nephrosplenic ligament, and the epiploic uh, uh, foramen. So, let's talk about the inguinal ring first. You've seen this picture before. Uh, this is the deep inguinal ring. Of course, this is the abdominal cavity. This is an endoscopic view. Of the abdominal cavity. This is the deep inguinal ring toward the scrotum here, toward the outside, toward the abdominal wall. You can feel it even with your hand. You will have the superficial inguinal ring. You cannot feel the deep with your hand, but you can feel the superficial inguinal ring with your hand. So the distance between the deep inguinal ring and the superficial inguinal ring, this distance basically is called the inguinal canal, the inguinal canal. And again, when if you remember from earlier discussion that during mating, and, and this area basically, before we talk about mating, uh, this area basically is formed by the two muscles, the external and the internal abdominal oblique, uh, when, because they have, they have a a different direction, opposite direction of muscle fibers. So the 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 um, the uh, external abdominal oblique, the muscle fibers go caudally and ventrally, whereas the muscle fiber direction in the internal abdominal oblique goes cranially and ventrally. Because the the two direction are are opposite to each others, uh, when 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 horse when when the male uh, um, mate with the female, the 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 abdominal uh, wall stretches, and when the abdominal wall stretches, the two muscles contract in different directions. When the two muscles contract in different directions, they open this ring wide, and that will give a tendency 
to small intestine, especially the jejunum, to dive in and get entrapped here. Of course, in the normal case, you have the spermatic cord and you have the cremaster muscle and uh, you have the testicular artery and vein and lymphatic goes into the, the inguinal canal. But in cases of colic, you will have also the jejunum getting in there. And, and, uh, and so that's where the problem uh, starts. But uh, we, we, have, we have seen these slides before. This is the external abdominal oblique where the muscle fibers, uh, the direction of the muscle fibers goes caudally and ventrally, whereas the internal abdominal oblique, go, the muscle fiber direction goes cranially and ventrally. Uh, this is in the normal situation. Now, when the contraction happened, that's during mating, uh, what happens is the, the ring, the deep inguinal ring and the superficial inguinal ring will basically widen up. They, they open up more. And, and so this will become an area where the intestine, especially the jejunum, gets entrapped, um, especially uh, during uh, mating. You've seen also this picture before. This is, this is basically a secrotum that's in, uh, uh, full of a small intestine, uh, which, which means this is a scrotal hernia or inguinal hernia. Um, now, the next area, the next natural opening where you have a tendency or the intestines in the horse have a tendency to get entrapped is the nephrosplenic area. This is a view caudal cranial. So you are looking, this is the tail of the horse, and this picture shows the structures from the tail to the head. So the head is away from you, and you're looking at the horse's tail right now. You will see that you, on the left hand side of the abdominal cavity, you have the left kidney, and you have also the spleen the left kidney and the spleen. They are connected with a structure that's called the nephrosplenic ligament or the renosplenic ligament. The renosplenic or the nephrosplenic ligament. The space between them, the left kidney, the spleen, the nephrosplenic ligament, and the dorsal wall of the abdominal cavity, this area right here, is a potential area for the large colon and the, the so the left uh, ventral and left dorsal colon to get entrapped in this area. Causes pretty painful uh, 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 animal here. Uh, so again, the area between the left kidney, the spleen, the nephrosplenic ligament and the ventral aspect of the dorsal wall of the abdominal cavity makes this area a potential area for intestinal entrapment. Let's do, let's take a look at this even even in more in more details. So this is the normal situation where you have the left ventral and left dorsal colons and you have the pelvic flexor here. This is the spleen and you cannot see the kidney. The pelvic flexor, as I mentioned before, is freely moving. There's no attachments, there's no ligament. The only ligament is between the spleen and the left kidney. In B, we will see that this freely moving pelvic flexure and left ventral and dorsal colon starts to climb up toward the spleen. In C, we will see that it's dorsal to the spleen. So now it is in the area that I mentioned before between the spleen, the left kidney, the nephrosplenic ligament, and the uh, uh, ventral aspect of the dorsal abdominal uh, uh, cavity. 
in D, we will see that the pelvic flexor gets entrapped completely in, 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 uh, in, this, in this area. This is another, another view looking at the pelvic flexor in the area entrapped between the left kidney, the spleen, and the nephrosplenic ligament in here. This is the rectum. This is the rest of the gastrointestinal tract. This is a jejunum. This is the rest of the uh, uh, gastrointestinal tract. This is a nephrosplenic entrapment. Very important case. And one of the most important things about it is that during rectal palpation, usually in normal horses, on the left-hand side, even toward the midline, you can feel the pelvic flexor. In cases of nephrosplenic entrapment, you will not be able to feel the pelvic flexor uh, 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 rectally. So that's very important to be to be um, to be uh, uh, memorized or rem remembered. Now we've talked about the inguinal area. We've talked about the nephrosplenic ligament. Now we will talk about the epiploic foramen. The epiploic foramen is the third natural opening that we will be talking about that causes a um, entrapment of the small intestines, especially the jejunum, in, in, in that space. So let's take a look first about what is the epiploic foramen and how, wh what's the borders? What's the, what, what are the borders for, for this foramen? Dorsally, you have the caudate process of the liver and the vena cava. Ventrally, you have the right lobe of the pancreas and the portal vein. Cranially, you have the hepatoduodenal ligament. Caudally, you don't have anything, of course. It's you, the surgeon. So, so dorsally, the liver and the vena cava. Ventrally, pancreas and the portal vein. And cranially, hepatoduodenal ligament. Let's take, a, let's take a look at a picture of this of this foramen. That's a pretty nice picture of, of the foramen, which is which is right here. And as you can see, dorsally you have the caudate lobe of the liver. Ventrally you have the portal vein and the and the pancreas. And cranially you have the hepatoduodenal ligament. The hepatoduodenal ligament. Now, caudally, as I mentioned, you don't have anything. Let's take a look at that's where sometimes a tear happens in this area in the epiploic foramen, which allows the jejunum to get here and entrapped in, in this area. Let's take a look at another picture. So, so these are, so these are the, the, uh, the, the borders again, the caudate, uh, lobe of the liver, the, uh, pancreas, and then the, uh, hepatoduodenal, uh, ligament. Now here, you also have the liver, the pancreas, and the hepatoduodenal ligament. And this is the area of the epiploic foramen. This picture is also from Dr. Ray, by the way, uh, at Auburn University's vet school. I thank him. I thank him very much uh, for these beautiful pictures. So, so now, so now, this is this is another picture showing the different borders of the. Of the um, of the epiploic foramen, you have you have the uh, uh, vena cava, you have the um, the uh, pancreas, and you have the um, hepatoduodenal ligament, of course, uh, cranium. But this is the area where you get the, the entrapment happens. So that so that the, the entrapment happens actually in two ways: medial to lateral and lateral to medial. Let's take a look at at, at this and see. Okay, so, so this is a picture. You're looking at, uh, the, the animal, uh, caudocranially. So you're looking at the tail of the animal and the head is away from you. 
you have the left uh, side of the horse, this is the right side of the horse, and this is the gastrointestinal tract, stomach, large intestine, spleen, liver, and this is the epiploic foramen. And I mentioned that you have two types of, of uh, entrapment. So the jejunum travels in two directions, either medial to lateral, all the way here, or lateral to medial, like this picture is shown, lateral, so the, the jejunum goes to the body wall first, and then gets again into the, into the uh, 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 omental bursa. See? So, so what I wanted, what I wanted to show you is that in the medial to lateral, medial to lateral, the intestine goes from here directly to here. From here to here. Now, from lateral to medial, the intestine goes to the lateral side and then gets in the uh, 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 omental bursa. So let's let's do this again. So from medial to lateral, the jejunum travels from here to here. This is the direction. From lateral to medial, so this is medial to lateral. From medial from lateral to medial, the intestine travels to the Abdominal wall first and then gets in the inside of uh, gets through the epiploic foramen into the the um, uh, omental uh, bursa. Now this might be better to illustrate the point. On the left hand picture see part of the jejunum goes to the abdominal wall and then gets into the omental bursa whereas in the right hand side picture the jejunum goes straight through the epiploic foramen. Just one point I wanted to mention here that the intestine travels for a short distance, when you have the medial to lateral epiploic foramen entrapment, whereas the intestines, the jejunum, I mean here, it travels longer distance when the entrapment goes lateral to medial. So medial to lateral is short, lateral to medial is long. That's the epiploic foramen entrapment. We talked about the inguinal canal. We talked about the nephrosplenic ligament. We've talked about the epiploic foramen entrapment. Three main natural openings that causes entrapment colic in horses. And we also talked about the three different a, uh, areas that has, have acute reduction in diameter that causes impaction colic. Also important to remember. Now, there, these are all anatomical factors, meaning that there are structural anatomy there. So what is the, the, the other category that, that causes a, um, a colic? is non-anatomical factor and we will talk about that in a second so we have non-anatomical factor we have lipomas we have enterolis we have parasites and we have sand we'll talk about each of them in a second so so the first one is pedunculated lipoma um, usually uh, uh, older horses usually uh, uh, horses with uh, 
with um, lots of fat and uh, you know that overweight if you will they they have a tendency to develop these unwanted uh, uh, growths fatty growths in in their intestines we call that pedunculated lipoma sometimes this pedunculated lipoma wraps around the intestine and and suffocates them if you will like this picture is showing and basically prevents the blood supply from a piece of the intestine which will basically kill it causing colic to the to the horse so this is one of the cases interolith is basically depending on again accumulation of of uh, of rocks and sand that becomes rocks in in the um, in in the intestines uh it's all based on the environment and if, if the if the environment is full of sand and full of um, you know dust and things like this or the, if the food even uh, is is not well maintained in in, uh, in certain areas and things like that that can lead uh, to to development of course there is a genetic factor that also uh, predisposes the animals to accumulate these these uh, 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 interleaths in the intestines causing causing problems uh, verminous arteritis uh, I talked about that before and that is in the cranial mesenteric artery when it's infested with three different types of strongulus parasite strongulus equinus vulgaris and edentatus this is as a, a slide that shows uh, a, a necropsy slide that shows uh, arteritis or inflammation of the artery uh, due to the uh, infestation of these of these um, uh, uh, parasites now this is the picture this is the picture that i've shown you before this is the cranial mesenteric artery and this is the rest of the gastro then this is the gastrointestinal tract where the cranial mesenteric artery is the main blood supply basically so if it's blocked with these parasites that will kill the 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 part of the intestine uh, that is that's associated with uh, with uh, uh, with this part now now I also mentioned before that it is extremely important when you direct a palpation to palpate the cranial mesenteric artery at the level of the base of the cecum. If there was, if there was history indicating uh, no vaccination and no deworming, and also if there was a history of or if the, in, during the rectal exam you, you felt pounding pulse in the, in the cranial mesentic artery, that means there is a possibility uh, for the uh, uh, strongulus uh, parasite to be, to be in the artery, causing um, verminous arteritis as, as a cause for this colic. So be pretty careful when, when, uh, when uh, palpating the cranial mesenteric artery rectally if there is pounding pulse and also please be very careful when you read the case history for the case very important dewarming 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 general maintenance of the horse that's that's pretty that's pretty basic okay so now we come to the fourth uh, non anatomical factor that causes colic and that is sand Again, certain areas in, in, in the country, probably probably Florida is one of them, um, the, you know, the, the environment is, is more sandy and that basically contaminates the food and, and you, can, you, can, you can see that when you put, the, um, you put some feces in a rectal sleeve and put some water and leave it for a little bit, you will see sand uh, basically a, a precipitating, if you will, in that, in the, in the, uh, in, in that, in that sleeve. So, so this is one of the one of the things that causes colic. So, so you see that we spend the majority of the time talking about the anatomical factors, the inguinal, um, uh, the inguinal uh, hernia. We we talked about the um, epipoic foramen entrapment. We've talked about the the three areas of the um, impaction colic, uh, and here we talked about four different um, um, factors that predisposes the the uh, four different non-anatomical factors that predisposes the animal to, to colic, um, which are sand and lipoma and uh, verminous arteritis or the parasitism with the parasite strongulus and, uh, uh, and interleaths. Diagnosis of colic. Uh, next time, 
I will talk about how we will diagnose the colic. Again, in 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 in, in these lectures, my intention is to is to um, get the the anatomy uh, on the surface. Uh, the clinics you will see it in in medicine and surgery later on. Now I'm going to give you the information just to make anatomy uh, uh, more relevant to you in, in your practice. So next time we'll talk about the um, diagnosis of, of uh, colic.